Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all, the Blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. As we greet you from the city of Islamabad in Pakistan with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are, we are talking about a new law of fasting which Allah has sent down to a new community in the religion of Islam. This is not Islam being revealed to the world for the first time. That's the schoolboy. Tell him, go back to school. No, no. Islam was already there. Islam was already there. And now a new community is established in the religion of Islam. So they have their community in the religion of Islam. And we have our community in the religion of Islam. And they have their Qibla. But we now have a new Qibla. We must not turn to their Qibla anymore, says Allah. And they must not turn to our Qibla. This is the, the Quran. So their Qibla is still valid for them. And this Qibla is valid for us. That Qibla is not mansukh. It is not abrogated. It is not cancelled. It's cancelled for us, not for them. So be careful. Be careful. Let me warn you. If you say that with the revelation of the Quran, all previous Sharia are now cancelled and abrogated, you have a PhD in foolishness and recklessness. And you'll have to answer for that on Judgment Day. I don't know where this brainwashing came from. Allah says... They must not follow your Qibla. And you must not follow their Qibla. Indicating that that Qibla is still valid for them. And the old law of fasting is still valid for them. And this Qibla is not valid for us. And this new law of fasting is valid for us. This community is in the religion of Islam and that community is also in the religion of Islam. Tell the schoolboy, go back to school. I don't know where this brainwashing came from. That all previous Sharia are all now abrogated and cancelled with the new Sharia which has come, the new law of fasting. Having disposed of that nonsense, we now proceed that Allah has given us a new law of fasting and we are very happy because it's an easier law than the old one. And there are smiles in Medina now that we are allowed to go to our wives during the nights of fasting. And that the law says you begin the fast when the light of the day is distinct from the darkness of the night. So unless you can see some light in the sky, the time of the fast has not as yet begun. So it's not a siren which tells you when to begin the fast. It's not some document with a printed figures on that which tells you when to begin the fast. Allah tells you when to begin the fast. But you prefer to follow the siren than to follow Allah. Allah says you will begin the fast when you can see sufficient light in the sky to distinguish between the day and night. 
So tell me, if you, be, you have already performed your Salat al-Fajr, and we still cannot see any light in the sky, which means you can still eat and drink, and you've already performed your Salat al-Fajr, is that Salat al-Fajr valid in defiance of Allah? Can it be valid when you're defying the Qur'an? When will you turn to the Qur'an for guidance rather than going elsewhere? Hmm? You finish your Salat. And when you're walking back home, you can't see your face in front of your hands. <laughs> you don't have enough light to be able to see your face. Huh? You are defying the Qur'an. And so remember... Forget the siren. Forget the paper. If you cannot see any light in the sky, the fast has not as yet begun. You can eat, forget them. When you can distinguish between light and darkness in the sky, only then does the fast begin. And unless the fast has begun, you cannot perform the Salat al-Fajr, the morning prayer. I, I'm sorry I have to spend so much time on this, which is so simple to understand. But this is the price we pay when people look for guidance elsewhere and ignore the Quran. And then we said, fast until the night time. And the definition of night time is when the day has ended. The definition of night time is when the day has ended. When the day ends, the night begins. When does the day end? <laughs> the day ends at sunset. When the sun has set. During the time that the sun is setting, it is prohibited to perform Salat. Everybody knows that. And as soon as this, the prohibited time has ended and the sun has set, Salat is permissible. Why is it so difficult for some of us to understand that the day has ended when the sun has set? And hence the night has begun when the day has ended. Why, why, why is it so difficult to understand something so simple? I'm sorry that I have to argue this case so much, but why? So many years have passed and still you will not think. Allah sent the Quran to people who think. Will you wait until the grave? Will you wait until judgment day to get to know that what I'm saying is correct? When you can understand it now? If you want to wait until that time and then learn that what I'm saying is correct, that's your choice. It will be better if you understand now that I'm explaining the Quran to you correctly. That the night begins when the day has ended. And the day ends when the sun is setting and it is prohibited to perform Salat. When that time of prohibited Salat has ended, when the sun has set, then Salat is permissible. So the day has ended when the sun has set. And the night has begun when the prohibited time of Salat has ended. The night has begun when the sun has set. So the fast will continue until the sun has set. That is the meaning of the Quran. To fast until the night time. If you wish to wait until judgment day, to learn that what I'm saying is correct, that's your choice. It's better for you to listen now 
and understand. I'm sorry to have to spend so much time on something so simple. And so we thank Allah. We thank him for having given us a new law of fasting for a new community. What distinguishes us from them, those who came before us, are these two things. Number one, we have a new Qibla. And our Qibla is Mecca. And we have a new law of fasting. And our law of fasting is not on disturbed, dispersed days of the year anymore. It is one consolidated month of fasting. What's the definition of a month in the Quran? The month of Ramadan. When, do we, when does the month of Ramadan begin? When does the month of Ramadan end? What is our system of time in the Quran? And when we address this subject, our brother the Jew better listen. And our brother the Christian also better listen. And our brothers the Hindus and the Buddhists and all the others who follow the religious way of life better listen to us. Because what we have to say is very important concerning what is the system of time. When does a month begin and when does a month end? We have to fast for one month, the month of Ramadan. And so we must know when does the month begin and we must know when the month ends. And if you are in Britain and you are obstinate that you already know the subject, you better listen to me rather than wait until Judgment Day to learn that what we are explaining here is correct. Allah never gave us a system of time which is universally applicable, meaning all over the world, the time will be the same at all times. A universal system of time, universally applicable. Rather, he gave us a system of time which is applicable in different geographical locations. Meaning that you have to look to the moon to know when the month begins. It is not a pope in Rome which tells you when the month begins. And the modern Western world will not tell you when a month begins. No. The Prophet ﷺ had problems with his wives. And uh, it was so difficult for him that he said to his wives, I'm going to separate myself from all of you for one month. That has to be serious, huh? And he separated himself from all his wives for one month. They could not come to meet him. When the 29th day came to an end, he came out of his khalwa and he went to his wife Aisha radiallahu ta'ala she asked why have you come the month has not yet ended <laughs> yes <laughs> she asked why have you come the month has not yet ended <laughs> he said Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and sometimes the month has 29 days and sometimes the month has 30 days here you are sometimes the month has 29 days and sometimes the month has 30 days and guess what they did the jazz modern western civilization with help from the vatican they tell us no your prophet is wrong don't follow him follow me <laughs> they say no 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 a month can have 28 days 
Really? We never heard this before. No Muslim will ever accept that nonsense. And a man can have 29 and 30, and a man can also have 31 days. Oh my gosh, what a load of rubbish. You think any Muslim will accept that? When he said, Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala, sometime the month has 29 days and sometime 30. And they say, no, the month can have 28, it can have 29, it can have 30, it can 31. Will this ummah ever abandon the mount, the Prophet and follow them? Do you believe that this Ummah will ever commit this act of betrayal? Abandoning the system of time that Allah gave? To accept a system of time which has come from Dajjal? I'm not talking to those who said goodbye to the Quran. No, no. I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to those who in their hearts still long to be faithful to the Quran. Not all of Pakistan is like that. There's that part of Pakistan which has said goodbye. Goodbye to the Quran. And I've not come to Pakistan to teach them. It's a waste of time. I've come to Pakistan to teach those in whose hearts there is still sincere love for the Book of Allah. And it is the Book of Allah who takes them to the Hadith. And when the Hadith is in harmony with the Quran, they accept it. And when the Hadith is in conflict with the Quran, they stay with the Quran. I'm come to Pakistan to speak to these people. And so, when Ramadan comes, mm -hmm. it's time to say goodbye to what Dajjal has given us that bogus system of time. The Dajjal needs a system of time which is universally applicable. So he can have financial transactions at the touch of a button, instantly, all over the world. The Dajjal needs a system of time which is universally applicable so that all of mankind can be interconnected with instant communication around the world. He needs that world, that one global society, if he is to rule the world. Dajjal needs that system of time. So Dajjal had to get us to abandon the system of time that Allah gave us and get us all like sheep and cattle and goats and camels to accept the system of time which he has given in which a day can have 28 days and 29 and 30 and 31 days. No, it's time when Ramadan has come. It is time to start thinking. Don't eat your biryani and go home and sleep as usual because we are being tested and we are failing that test. It is pathetic. I'm not talking to that part of Pakistan which has said goodbye to the Quran. I can't talk to them. I'm talking to this part of Pakistan which still has love for the Book of Allah. For the Christian in Pakistan who still has love for Jesus, for Nabi Islam, that for us the month begins when we see a new moon. And the new moon has to be seen in the sky above us, not in Chicago. We will not fast because Chicago saw the moon. No, no, no. We fast when we see the moon above us. And we end the fast when we see the moon above us. This is not all. This is a more complex subject now because we have the telephone and we can communicate with each other over long distances instantaneously. But that does not mean that we should abandon the religion of nature to adapt the religion of technology. 
Now remain faithful to the religion of nature and do not allow technology to change the religion of nature. And the religion of nature is that you look in the sky to see when the month begins and you look again in the sky to see when the month has ended. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.